Well, this is an interesting story that I feel quite passionately about. Now, talking about this, I'm going to sound like a, a socialist. Although, when you get into it, you're not. It says here, the richest 1% of people in the UK are now wealthier than 70% of the population combined, according to an analysis by Oxfam. You can look this up for yourself. It's, it's out there. Sorry if I seem out of breath. I'm on uh, antibiotics at the moment, and with asthma, <laughs> it just generally does this. A report by the charity highlights how... 685,500 richest people in Britain are worth a total of 2.8 trillion. I'm going to say that that's probably massively underestimated, uh, but because a lot of the money is uh, well, offshore so that you can't see. Uh, compared with 48 million people in the UK whose combined wealths are total 2.4 trillion. Now, I'm going to play you a little clip now. Uh, and then I'll put a link into the video after so that you can see for yourself. But bear in mind that the difference between the rich and the poor during Roman times was infinitely smaller, massively smaller, huge. I mean, even by those dates, I mean, you know, if you were a person just scrabbling around in the dust and you were looking at a Roman emperor, you would say there was a huge difference. But by today's standards, nowhere near as much. And, and these took a gentle increase until, say for instance, um, sometime shortly before the First World War. And it was at the time that the industrialists got themselves organised with, say for instance, the railway over in America, uh, infrastructure over here, uh, when they started to set up the idea of production lines, that kind of stuff, when the oil industry started off, the shipping industry, the coal mining and that kind of stuff. And it was at that time that, at the turn of the century, that they were starting to make enough money that certain um, individuals um, in industry, banking and oil and that kind of stuff, had, at that time, uh, more money than some third world countries. Which is just incredibly wrong, uh, by my estimation. But have a quick look and uh, watch this video and then we'll talk about it. Let's start with this graph a perfectly even distribution of wealth among all living people, with everyone divided into five equal groups. Now, let's show how much each group actually has. Shocking, right? 80% of the world's people barely have any wealth. It's hard to even see them on the chart. Meanwhile, the richest 2%, they have more wealth than half of the rest of the world. Let's look at this chart another way. Let's take the whole world's population, all 7 billion of us, and reduce it to just a representative 100 individuals. Here they are, poorest people on the left, richest people on the right. Now let's show how the world's total wealth, roughly $223 trillion, is distributed. The vast majority have practically nothing, nothing with which to educate their children, nothing with which to pay for basic medicines, while the richest 1%, They've accumulated 43% of our world's wealth. Pretty mad, right? Now, I was taught by uh, my father, who was a conservative, that when I started talking about the rich and all the rest of it, it was jealousy. And uh, I sounded like a little socialist that wanted to take away their wealth. But unfortunately, the more I find out that my dad's generation was programmed, like the rest of us were, to not question the obvious and to accept it, because that's the way it's been. And also, the schooling system and everything else that we get trained doesn't teach us to question. I mean, it's a bit like third world debt. Who actually are we in debt to? Who is the entire world in debt to? But we never talk about that. Here's the thing. At the moment, over in Davos, these of the most richest people in the world are meeting right now, uh, 2,000 at least private planes, although they don't want you to fly, um, being piloted by pilots who they've asked not to be vaccinated for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, however, these people will never understand what it's like for you to worry about putting the heating on, etc. Now, just for your benefits, I'm sat here doing this at the moment with a hoodie on and that, trying to keep warm because the cost of gas is so ridiculous that I can't afford to heat this place properly at the moment because January is a quiet month. These people will never know what that's like. Um, they'll never know what it's like to have cold hands in their house. 
But that is just the way it is. Um, these people at the moment, they're the ones that organise and rig the banking system so that pay, there's raises and falls. And it's their greed. Because then we get this, somebody said this, it was a, an Indian guy, he's really enough, uh, really, really interesting guy. He, he said, there's enough for everybody's need in the world, but not for everybody's greed. When you look at that graph, I have to say that the people who are that rich have to be evil. The reason I say this is because there is a point where you've got more than enough money to keep yourself comfortable, more than enough money to go and do what you like and buy what you like. But after that, what is the actual point? Why is it that you need more? And it's a problem with your, your makeup. It's the problem with the way you were brought up. It's the way you were bred. Can you remember watching the film The Titanic where it was one of the greatest um, ways of showing you the difference between the class system, that first-class dogs went down onto the third-class poop deck to take a, a shite, um, the way that you weren't allowed up, the way that the boats would be seated according to class, at least that's what one woman who was rich uh, said. Now, I know that was a film, but it was a good indication at the time. Um, and the way that steerage were treated and the funny thing to mention that even though on that particular boat even though the first class rooms were worth so much money the bread and butter of say for instance the white star line and other lines like it was steerage steerage where they crammed them in there fed them basic food um uh, and uh, like the titanic that actually would have had uh, more bathing facilities and some others and very few rats which was one of the jokes in the film but the thing is they are, at the moment, engineering more ways to redistribute wealth from the poor to the rich, and yet they have no need for it because they're so incredibly rich. Um, I consider myself well off against some bloke in Africa who's going back would have worried about whether his child will die before it makes the age of nine, or he worries about whether his crops are going to work or whether his goat will die or whatever. You know, I, I actually understand there's a difference, but we've been taught to think like that. And while we're looking down at thinking they're better than us and the rest of it, and when you look at people like Elon Musk, Elon Musk has a lot of money. But when you look at how much money he has to the people at the top, he's not a one percenter, by the way. Don't think he is. These people at the top have enough money to change the course of the future by what they do. Um, it's it's just amazing. We look at people like, say, for instance, uh, Theresa May, Boris Johnson, Jacinda Ardern, incidentally, she's now looking for a job, apparently. We'll do something on that. Um, well, we look at these world leaders as being rich. They're as much played by the rich as, as the rest of us, although they think they're a cut above us and still think that they're quite... It's, they're deluded, by the way. They're, they're just used. They are bought and paid for, and they do have a much more comfortable life than, say, somebody who's waiting down the road for the number seven bus out in this weather, which is actually at the moment three degrees, so it's warmed up a bit now. You know, they're not going to be wondering about, are we going to make this month's payments? You know, have we got enough food? Uh, is the price of food going to go up? All of these obvious things that you and me... If you're watching this, probably you're in the same boat, are worrying about. Will the cost of fuel go up? If so, I'm working X amount of miles away from uh, home when I do work, which at the moment is not a lot. Um, when I do, that makes a difference. Um, will they be worrying about these 15 minute cities because, or 15 minute neighborhoods? Because how will that affect somebody who's got to travel to work? None of these things will affect these people because they're devoid of that they're different i mean you talk about people who want to talk about say for instance climate change and all the rest of it and then jump on a plane everywhere to go and talk about it there are people that defend them there are people that say well because they're bringing awareness that sort of cancel out uh, or cancels out their carbon footprint i say bs to that i don't believe in it um but it's amazing the people who are punished by the system that will defend the system it's quite amazing um, but on this one, Oxfam are correct. Interesting. The story is covered more by the left than it is by the right because the left uh, will predominantly talk more about, um, well, they don't like rich people, to be honest, 
although a lot of the people on the left are rich. Do you know, it's so, it amazes me. I've been around it a little bit, and some of the people that talk about socialism and wanting socialism are champagne socialists. I remember I was over in Ireland one day, and I met this, this female, Southern Ireland. She had a chain of hairdressers that she did rather well at. So I said to her, I said, um, so uh, if socialism came into Ireland, she went, yes. I said, that'd be a good thing, right? She went, yeah, definitely. I said, so what if they wanted to seize your hairdressers and take them in the state? Yeah, definitely. I'd agree to that. I went, rubbish. That wasn't the words I used, obviously. But these people believe their lies. They believe it right up until the point that it would actually come and then they would not be all for it. But I'm starting to see a bit of a change in things that are going on at the moment in the world. And I'm wondering whether some of these people that are all for globalism and all for all this sort of stuff have realised that as it moves on and it gets further down the road that they'll actually lose out and lose everything. And maybe they're starting to push back. So it's interesting. It's an interesting time to be alive as well as <laughs> quite worrying. But if you could click your fingers tomorrow and distribute the wealth evenly all around the world, would you do it? Because there's people that would say no. They don't know why they would say no, but they would say no. Um, there's people that will defend the 1% until the cows come home, but saying that if you um, punish uh, companies uh, and stuff like that, and you make it tougher for them, say, for instance, to make profit, that they won't bother. They'll go elsewhere. And that's true. They will. But if everywhere was the same, it wouldn't be the same. And I believe that every company should make money. And I believe that everybody who, or every person who sets up a company should make more money than his staff because without him, the staff wouldn't have a job. I believe that. What I don't like is uh, the banking system that just prints money out of nowhere and then charges us for it. I don't like that. I don't like uh, globalism on steroids where... It floods a country with people who have never had anything and it pays them below average wages for that country and they think they're onto a good thing whilst the people in that country struggle. That would be us. Um, I don't like that kind of stuff. But let me know what you think in the comments because I'm always interested and I do go through them. Um, am I being a little socialist? Or is there generally such a difference uh, now between the rich and the poor that it's un unfair? Um, I do believe that, that we are in a failing uh, state of play at the moment. Uh, there's a, a video that I've, I've asked people to watch. Now, I, it probably is a controlled opposition type of a video, but th a lot of the facts in it are true. And it goes through the different stages of empire, which we're in, uh, and, and it says about the declining ends, and literally we tick all the boxes. Uh, and at the very end, there are people that are trying to live off a bloated state that adds to the collapse which we can see at the moment and um, there are people who as the it falls apart will set about their own little groups to try and dominate th what's left and we've seen that now I with companies globalism political people uh, religious bases and all the rest of it so let me know what you think anyway i'm going to go on to the next because um there's a lot to talk about today, so I'll see you in a bit.